Hello everyone, my name is Jess and I'm going to show you how you can create a neckband or a neck rib for a t-shirt or a sweatshirt in club. There are three different methods that we're going to go over in this video. The first method is really great and quick and easy. If you don't understand pattern making as much, or if you just need a quick, nice looking neckband for presentation purposes, this is a really great route to go. The second method is really similar to the first, especially if you already know where you want your neckline to sit. The third method is true to the way that a t-shirt is actually going to be constructed in real life. So it's a rectangular piece that's actually going to be folded over. So if you're looking to fit this style, this would be a great method to follow. When we get to the end, I'll show you a little bit about how you can prep style and fix that neckband to sit nicely on your avatar. All right, let's jump in. I have my file here and I already have a sweatshirt outfit and the neckline is ready to add a neck rib or uh, neck band too. There are a couple of different examples that we're going to go through and it may be situational in which way, which ones you decide to proceed with. Um, you may even use a combination of them. For this first example, we're going to add the neck band from where the original neckline is. Um, so we'll be extending that material from where that is. To start, you can grab your edit pattern tool and I have symmetry at my front and my back. You can tell because of the dashed line going between going down the center front and the center back of these pieces. So I only need to select one side of my neckline. If you don't have symmetry, you might need to select both sides. With both of them selected, I can now right click and the option I'm going to choose is offset pattern outline. When I click to offset the pattern outline, my direction is going to be to extend because I'm extending the material from where the original outline is that I selected. The distance is going to be whatever width of that neckband you would like it to be. So I'm doing three quarters, so I'm putting 0.75 inches into the distance. The number of offsets I'm going to keep at one, but if you would like to have additional offsets added at your neckline or any other time that you're using offset pattern outline, you can always increase that amount. I'm going to be sure to check off create internal line, and that's because it's going to create an active internal line where my original pattern outline was. And we're gonna use that to cut and sew this piece away. For side segment type, I'm going to change this to extend. I'm changing this to extend because I want the material to just extend along the trajectory of the original shoulder seam where that's being added. So everything is nice and smooth. Once I've done that, I can press OK, and you'll see that that additional material has been added into your neckline area. We're actually going to cut and sew on that internal line where your original pattern outline was with the edit pattern tool. So you can select half of your back neckline and half of your front neckline or your entire neckline um, where that original was on the internal line, and then you can right click and cut and sew. That's going to cut that piece away. Something to keep in mind when you're using offset pattern outline is when you extend the material, it's not going to sew that together for you at that side neck. So we're actually gonna to need to go in and I'm gonna use my segment sewing tool. And I'm gonna to sew the side neck together. I'm only doing this on one side because it's maintained symmetry um, between each side of the front and the back neckline. Now, the last thing here is to lower the particle distance of these two pieces. So grab them with your transform pattern tool. And then underneath simulation properties in the property editor, you can lower the particle distance from 20 to five. This is the best practice while you're working because these pieces are smaller in height or width than your hand. Um, so while you're working, it's a good idea to lower the particle distance of them. Now I can turn on my simulation and I have my neckband in place. Now I can go in and add a couple of details to this to make it look even more real. I'm gonna hide my avatar for a sec. You can go into the vertical toggle menu and go to this option here to hide your avatar if you'd like to. Now, right now it looks like just a single layer, but I could make this look a little bit thicker using um, kind of a visual trick and then quote. You wanna make sure you're on thick textured surface to see the effect of this. It's in your vertical toggle menu and it's one of the surface views. Thick textured surface is going to show you the full thickness of all of your pattern pieces. And we're gonna to add to that thickness. You can then select the pieces, your front and back neck band with your select move tool in your 3D window or your transform pattern tool in your 2D window, whichever you would like. We're going back into the property editor and we're going down to where it says additional thickness rendering. Additional thickness rendering is just a visual thickness that's being added to these pieces to give them just a little bit more um, thickness to them. Um, so I'm going to increase that to about two. 
and you can see already in my 3D window that that visually looks thicker, um, almost like I've already put it on fold, even though I haven't. So it's a nice little trick. You can try a couple of different additional rendering thicknesses until you're happy with the desired effect. Um, just about there looks good for me. So I'm gonna leave that there. If this is meant to be double layer and um, a curved neckline, like what you see here, you could actually make it look that way as well on this edge. So right now this edge just looks kind of curved as if the piece is unfold, but I can actually turn on what's called double-sided to add a dent to that edge so that it actually looks double-sided. To do this, you would go into, grab your select move tool or your transform pattern tool and select that front neck band. And then you're going underneath with this selected line section to where it says double-sided. It's underneath curved side geometry and you'll see double-sided. When you check this off, all it's doing is adding a little dent here to this edge so that it looks like it's double-sided. It's not making your pieces double-sided or anything like that, but it can give you that effect. So I've added out the front neckline and not the back and you can see that. So that's the first option for creating a neckband. And I'm just gonna jump into a different file so I can show you another method. In this method, this is the original neckline and this is exactly where we want it to be. So instead of extending the material, we're gonna cut into the body instead. So you can grab your edit pattern tool. I'm going to click on the front and the back neckline again. Then you're going to right click and offset as internal line. When you get this offset as internal line box up, the number of offsets is going to be one. So however many internal lines that you wanna create from your original pattern outline. And then for the distance, I'm going to put in that 0.75, that three quarter inch neck band again. So it's creating an internal line, 0.75 away from the original pattern outline. Under option, I'm going to be sure to check off extend. I'm checking off extend because I wanna make sure that the internal line is actually hitting the pattern edge so that I can cut all the way through. Once you've done that, you can press okay. If you wanna make sure that you can see this in the 3D window, you can turn on being able to see your, your internal lines by show internal lines in your vertical toggle menu. Now I'm gonna grab my edit pattern tool and I'm going to select the internal line that I just created. I'm selecting the front and back at the same time. Once they're selected, I can right click and cut and sew to cut that piece away. In this case, the shoulder or the side neck is actually gonna be sewn together for you because we used offset as internal line and cut away from where the original neckline is rather than extending the material. But because we cut away from these larger pieces, it is a good idea to lower your particle distance. So you can select both of those pieces with the transform pattern tool and underneath simulation properties in the property editor, you can go to particle distance and lower that from 20 to five. Good idea to simulate after you've changed particle distance and after you've made a new um, cutscene. So go ahead and turn on your simulation for a sec. Now you could use the options that I showed you in the last method um, to increase the thickness just visually, um, or you could actually create a layer clone to give it that double sided effect or that double layer effect. So I'm going to grab my transform pattern tool. I selected my front and my back neck band and just move them up in the space to make it a little bit easier for me to add an additional layer. Then with the transform pattern tool, I'll select both of the front and the back neckline or neck band. And then I will go to layer clone under. When you click layer clone under, you're going to have the layer clone kind of attached to your mouse and you just need to put it down somewhere by left clicking once in your 2D window. If I'm creating a layer clone under, I tend to put it underneath the pieces that I am creating the layer clone from. So I'll left click once to just put that down. This very quickly and easily just makes a layer clone for you, that second layer, and it's already nicely in place. You can turn on your simulation and you'll have two layers at your neck belt and they'll already be sewn together for you, which is really nice. Layer clones will automatically be stitched together um, on the pattern outline, as well as on the internal lines that could be there. They'll also be linked if you make any changes. In this next example, we'll be creating a rectangular binding. So it's going to be much closer to how an actual pattern would be um, for this type of 
neckband on a t-shirt or even a sweatshirt, especially if it's made of rib. To start this, we need to make sure that we understand how long our neckline is, the neckline circumference. So I'll grab my edit pattern tool, I'll select half of the front neckline, and then I will select half of the back neckline. You might have to select your entire neckline if you don't have symmetry on your pieces. On my cursor, it's already going to show me what the length is of the segments that I've selected. But if I look in my property editor, I can see under selected line, the 2D line length, which is the lines that I've selected, as well as the symmetric line length. The symmetric line length is all of the segments that I've selected plus their symmetric copy. That's about 21.688. And when you're making a rectangular binding, it tends to be half inch to three quarters of an inch shorter than the original length of your neckline, sometimes even one inch shorter. So I'm gonna round up this 21.688 to 21.75 and then reduce it three quarters of an inch. So my neckband is going to be 21 inches wide. Then I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool and to use the rectangle tool, you just need to click once in your 2D window. This will let you enter specific measurements. So I'm gonna enter that width of 21. And then for the height, I'm going to fold this over. So I'm going to put the entire height of what all of the material is going to be needed for it to be folded over. You could also just put your finish length if you want to. I'm gonna do 1.5. So it ends up being 0.75 inches wide. Then I'm gonna press okay. To set myself up for success, I'm going to go in and add the fold line on this piece. I'll grab my edit pattern tool, select the top segment, hold shift, select the bottom segment. Then I can right click and distribute an internal line between these segments. For the number of offsets, I'm only going to do one. And that's really all you need to worry about in this box because it's going to distribute one internal line right down the center. And then you can press okay. I also like to right click and edit um, and add, extend trim and add point to pattern outline with the edit pattern tool because that'll break my pattern edge into two separate segments. Lastly, before we sew this into place, we don't want to forget to lower the particle distance because this piece is on the smaller side. So grab your transform pattern tool, click on that neck band, and then underneath simulation properties, you can lower your particle distance from 20 to five, which is just a best practice while you're working. This piece is ready to sew into place. And I'm just going to hide my avatar. You can go into your vertical toggle menu in your 3D window, just so you can see exactly where you're sewing and make sure you're going in the same direction all the way around. We're going to need to place our opening somewhere of this neckband. And usually it's kind of a little bit back from the shoulder seam on either side of the neckline. And that's just so that you can't really see that opening from the front. I've already gone in and added a point where I want that to end. And if you haven't, you can go in and right click split and add that point wherever you would like to. Once your point is there and you understand where you want that opening to be, you can sew it into place. I like to set it up so I can see my 3D window at the same time while I'm sewing. I'll grab my free sewing tool and we're going to do one to multiple sewing. So sew your entire one segment, click, click along the neck band. And then you'll hold shift telling Clo I've sewn one and now I'm sewing to multiples. I'm going to start where that point is, where the opening will be, and I'll click once and then move along. I'm going to keep holding shift, and I know I need to go in the same direction all the way around to sew this appropriately into place. So if I'm ever confused, I can move my mouse while still holding shift in my 3D window and just see where on my piece and what direction I'm supposed to be sewing in. As I move my mouse, you can see in my 2D window exactly where that is. So I'll click once and then keep going around the neckline. If I'm confused at all on where to jump onto that back piece, again, I can move my mouse into my 3D window and see where I'm supposed to be starting. Click and then click until you've finished all the way around your neckline. I'll bring my avatar back so you can see what this looks like. Now with my select move tool in the 3D window, I can right click onto this piece. And rather than relying on simulation to get this piece into place, I'm going to go to superimpose side. Superimpose side is just going to jump this piece into place. And then it's a good idea to turn on simulation for a second, just allow that piece to relax. You will still need to make sure that you are sewing this shut at the opening of the neckband. 
So you can grab your segment sewing tool and click, click and click, click. I have two separate sections like you saw and then turn on your simulation to sew that shut. Now, if you were just stopping there, that's fine. Otherwise you can fold this over. To fold this over, you would grab your fold arrangement tool. I have my internal lines showing so I can see the internal fold line that I created on my piece and that's easy for me to select. I'll click once onto that internal line and then I'm gonna grab whichever area is appropriate to fold the material over that I wanna fold. I'll left click and drag that all the way around. And I wanna just make sure I'm not going too far where you start to see, see that um, back of the fabric starting to poke through. You don't need to make those arrows match. In fact, you shouldn't if it's going to cause collision issues like what you see here. You only need to fold it as far as it needs to go because you can always go back in and adjust that later. Once that material is folded, you can grab your segment sewing tool or your free sewing tool and stitch the top edge to the bottom edge of that neckband. So you're basically seaming what you've folded over shut. Directly after you've created that sewing relationship or reselect it with the edit sewing tool, you can go into the property editor and change the sewing line type of that sewing relationship from custom angle, which would be a pressed open seam to turned. This material is being folded back on itself, so it doesn't actually need to be pressed open where you're sewing it together. Now you can turn on your simulation and see how your neckband is laying. Now, generally when you're constructing this type of neckband on a t-shirt or even on a sweatshirt, it's usually steamed into place or kind of shaped into the neckline itself. And you can do a couple of different techniques in Clo to kind of replicate that process or make it look like it's a laying a little bit flatter. So let me show you a couple of different ways that you can do this. The first to make it lay flatter is to actually adjust the angle of where you folded. You can grab your edit pattern tool, click onto that internal line where you folded, and underneath fold, you'll see the fold angle. The fold angle could be a variety of different angles depending on how far you folded that material. But you could bring that all the way down to zero and even turn on fold rendering, which will make sure that you have a nice crisp clean edge there. In addition to changing the angle of where you folded, you can click onto that internal align and add a slight elastication to it. In the property editor, you'll go underneath selected line to where it says elastic. And for the elastic ratio, you can start with something like 95. An elastic ratio of 95 is going to shrink that line to 95% of the original length. So once you've turned on at a ratio of 95, you can turn on your simulation and see how that lays. You may wanna go a little bit smaller depending on what your neckline looks like or your piece, but that does a pretty good job of making sure that it's actually laying a little bit flatter. Keep in mind that you have an invisible barrier around your avatar as well as your pieces. So if they look a little bit puffy or far away from the body, there's a couple of things contributing to that here that can be lowered when you move into a higher resolution or when you're more finished with your style. So the first trick is elastic. I'm actually gonna remove that elastic so I can show you another trick that you could use. Now you'll wanna check the grain of your piece. Um, you can always switch to your edit texture tool to know which um, direction you wanna apply shrinkage, but you can grab your transform pattern tool, click onto that piece, and then underneath simulation properties, another way to make this just sit and kind of shrink into your neckline a little bit is to change the shrinkage weft or warp. You can try a couple of different ones. When you turn on simulation, it tends to shrink the neckline and look a little bit more steamed into place. So up to you if that's something that you would like to try, but definitely another option to get that neckband to sit just a little bit flatter and more steamed into your neckline. Another method and actually kind of follows a little bit of what you would do in real life when you would steam the neckline of a t-shirt into place. Um, you can use our steam tool to steam just the inner edge or the folded area of this to make it sit a little bit flatter. When you have that steam brush tool, you wanna to make sure that it's on kind of just a gentle shrinkage. I have it on like negative 9% right now. The size is kind of small and then your hardness, you can try a couple of different ones. The hardness is whether it'll have kind of more of a hard edge in the way that you're brushing that steam into place or a softer, a little bit more blurred edge. To apply steam, you'll just left click and drag. I'm left clicking and dragging on the fold line. So it's a little bit on the top and the bottom or the outer and the inner edge. And then you can turn on simulation to see if that was enough steam for the look that you're going for. You can always drag it again to apply a little bit more steam and then turn on your simulation and see if that is helping with how you'd like that to look. 
Now, just to review a couple of factors that are contributing to the way that this neck band, band is laying, if you have it folded over, or you have a double layer, keep in mind that if it looks puffy, there is an invisible barrier around the entire piece, which is propelling those two layers away from each other, contributing to it looking not as flat as you might like it to look. If you click on that piece with the select move tool, underneath simulation properties, that is the additional thickness collision. Generally, you wouldn't lower this until you're very happy with how that piece is laying, because if you allow those pieces to drape closer together by lowering this amount, um, you have an increased risk of collision issues. So I just lowered the additional collision thickness to 1.5. I can lower it to one. And if you're watching my 3D window, you can see how much flatter that is sitting. If you can go down to 0.5 and see how flat that neckline is sitting. So that's the first thing. The next is that you can see there's a little bit of a distance between the avatar and the neckband. If you click onto the avatar, the avatar's version of that invisible barrier is called a skin offset. Right now that skin offset is three millimeters. I'm gonna lower that to 1.5. You can see the neckband is sitting a lot closer and now down to one. And you can see that sitting a lot closer. Generally, you wouldn't do either of those things until you are very finished with your editing and the way that you want it to lay. Also, if you use the high res button to move into high res, the skin offset of the avatar, as well as the additional thickness collision, will both be lowered for you um, while changing the particle distance or the resolution of all the pieces. So it's not necessarily something you have to do manually, more just if you're curious why your neckband isn't sitting the way that you want it to. There is one more way, and I'm going to switch into a different file to kind of steam your neckband into place. And this one is a little bit more simulation based. So in this example, I already have my neckband in place. It's already folded over and it's a rectangular neckband. This specific rectangular neckband is really meant to be stretched into the neckline. So it's quite a bit shorter. And that's usually a good situation to use this technique. It's already sewn into place, but I'm going to, in the 3D window, right click on the piece and deactivate pattern and sewing. Deactivation is going to change the piece to this kind of purplish blue color and make it a little bit sheer so you can see that it is deactivated. And Clo is basically going to pretend that the piece is not there in the space. So when you turn on simulation, it's going to give that neckline a chance to relax. Depending on the example, you may see that neckline really open up because the neckband is not holding it into place. Once you've allowed that neckline to relax, you can turn off simulation. And we're actually going to freeze the front and the back pieces. So select those pieces with the select move tool in the 3D window, right click and freeze. The reason we're freezing is because we're gonna reactivate this piece. So right click and activate. And then we're going to turn on simulation to let the neckband now go to where the frozen neckline is. So when I turn on my simulation, my neckband is going to jump right to where that frozen neckline is, essentially stretching the neckband into the frozen front and back. Now, this is dependent on the physical property of the material, how much it's going to kind of bounce back into place, or if you have a really hard elastication there with the strong force on it. But I'm going to right click and unfreeze the front and the back. And then I'll turn on my simulation again. But the neckband should stay fairly stretched in, depending on a couple of different factors to that neckline and lay nice and flatly flat for you. All right, I hope that this video was helpful. You could even combine a couple of these different tactics to create different types of neckband effects or add different thickness. Um, you can even go in and make it even more realistic with different types of top stitch. Um, but I hope that it was helpful. Please let us know in the comment section if you have any questions about any of the methods that we just reviewed. And don't forget to like and subscribe so that as you as we roll out more content, you'll be able to see it as well. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed.